Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnston. Welcome to lecture 27 of Advanced Linear Algebra. In today's lecture, we're going to do two things. We're going to introduce a new family of matrices called normal matrices, and then we're going to see a theorem that tells us why normal matrices are important, why we care about them in the first place. Okay, so let's start off, let's just introduce normal matrices, see what they are, okay? So we're gonna say that a complex matrix is normal if A star A equals A A star, okay? In other words, if A commutes with its conjugate transpose, with its adjoint, okay? So those are normal matrices. And it turns out that we've actually seen a lot of matrices earlier in this course and in our introductory linear algebra course because a lot of important families of matrices are normal, okay? So for example, every unitary matrix is normal because, well, remember unitary matrices, they're exactly the matrices for which A star A equals the identity matrix. In other words, they're exactly the matrices for which the conjugate transpose A star is the inverse. But I mean, if A star A equals the identity matrix, then a, A star also equals the identity matrix. And the important point is that these two things, then they're the same. They're both the identity matrix, so they're the same. So therefore, yeah, every unitary matrix is a normal matrix. Okay, but there are a bunch of other examples as well. For example, Hermitian matrices. If A equals its own conjugate transpose, then we say that's Hermitian. And in this case, well, A star A would just equals A squared, right? Equals A times itself. And similarly, if you multiply in the other order, a star equals a, so this is also just a squared. So they both equal a squared, so they both equal the same thing. So they're normal, right? Every Hermitian matrix is normal. Also, every skew Hermitian matrix is normal, okay? If a star equals minus a, then we just do a similar sort of calculation to what we did above. a star a then is just minus a squared, right? It's minus a times a, so minus a squared. But the same thing happens if you multiply in the other order. The minus sign can be just pulled out in front. So a times a star is a times minus a, which is just minus a squared again. So again, they're the same thing. This a star a and a star are the same thing. So skew Hermitian matrices are also normal. Another important family of normal matrices are the diagonal matrices. So remember diagonal matrices, they have some numbers along their diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So I'm just going to call their diagonal entries D1 up to Dn here. If I do the product A star times A, then in the top left entry, for example, what happens is I get D1 bar times D. Remember, you get the complex conjugate of D, D1 times D itself, right? The product of two diagonal matrices is just the entry-wise product of them. That for diagonal matrices, entry-wise multiplication is the same as matrix multiplication. Okay, so in the top left entry, you get D1 bar times D, which is just the magnitude of D1 squared, right? It's the length or, or, or magnitude or absolute value of D1 squared. Okay, and similarly with all the other diagonal entries, you just get the length of D2 squared and so on all the way down the diagonal. Okay, but that's the exact same thing as if you get if you multiply them in the other order, right? Because for diagonal matrices, matrix multiplication is entry-wise multiplication. It's commutative. If you're multiplying diagonal matrices, they commute past each other. Okay, so yeah, A star A equals A A star. So again, great. We know that these matrices are normal. Okay, so diagonal matrices are another example of, of normal matrices. But there are lots of matrices out there that are normal that are none of those previous types that we talked about. There are also normal matrices that are not diagonal, they're not unitary, they're not Hermitian, and they're not skew Hermitian. So let's just go through a quick example to see how that can happen. And it's just going to be this matrix here. Okay, we said the normal matrices are complex matrices, but again, remember real numbers are okay too, because real numbers are complex numbers. So here's a real normal matrix that does not fall into any of those classes that we talked about earlier. Okay, and to see that it is a normal matrix, you just compute these two products here. You compute A star A and you compute A A star. If they equal each other, it's normal. If they don't equal each other, it's not normal. So let's just do the product. A star A is just the product of these two matrices here. And you do that matrix multiplication and you just get the matrix with ones everywhere except two is on the diagonal. So you get two, one, 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 two, one, 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 two. Okay, and then it's just a calculation to check that if you do the product in the other order, you get the exact same thing. Okay, so that's all I'm saying there. You do the product in either order, you get this matrix in the middle here. And while it's also just straightforward to check that, no, that matrix, it's not unitary, it's not Hermitian, it's not skew Hermitian, and it's not diagonal. Okay, so normal matrices, they're a proper superset of all of those. Okay. Why do we care about normal matrices, right? It seems like sort of an arbitrary definition. Why do we care about ma a matrix commuting with its conjugate transpose? And the answer is given by something called the complex spectral decomposition. 
There are a bunch of different ways of thinking about this theorem. One way of thinking about them is, well, why are normal matrices important? Okay. Another way of thinking about it, though, is remember we learned that every square complex matrix can be sure triangularized. Okay. It can be made upper triangular by a unitary similarity transformation. Well, what if, what if we wanted to turn a matrix into a diagonal matrix via a unitary similarity transformation? Which matrices can we make that work for? Okay, in other words, which matrices have the property that if I, I can find some unitary similarity transformation that makes them diagonal? Okay, and it turns out the answer is exactly, well, the normal matrices. Normal matrices are unitarily diagonalizable. Okay, so that's what the theorem says. Okay, so suppose that you've got any old complex squared matrix. Well, then it turns out that there exists a unitary matrix and a diagonal matrix such that A is unitarily diagonalizable if and only if it's a normal matrix. So remember, sure triangularization says we can always fit a triangular matrix in the middle here. But now we're saying, well, if it's a normal matrix, you can go one step further and actually make it diagonal, not just triangular. Okay, so let's see where this comes from. Okay, let's see where this, this theorem comes from. Let's prove it. All right, and it's an if and only if theorem, okay? It's an exact characterization of which matrices can be decomposed in this way. You know, if a matrix is normal, it can be decomposed in this way. And if a matrix can be decomposed in this way, then it's normal, okay? So we gotta prove both directions. All right, so let's, let's show the only if direction. In other words, let's show that if it can be decomposed in this way, then it's normal. All right, so well, a, if A can be decomposed in that way, then A star A equals this junk here. I'm just plopping in this decomposition for A, okay? And then I just star out this entire bracket here, remembering that it swaps the order of the multiplication. And now I just noticed that, hey, I had a U star U in the middle there, so that cancels out, right? U is unitary, so it's U star is the inverse of U, so it goes away, it becomes an identity matrix. And I'm just left with this junk over on the right here. <clears throat> All right, well, if I compute that product in the other order, in other words, if I compute a a star now, well, similarly, I get this. I'm just plugging in the decomposition for a again. And again, I'm just gonna expand that out as much as I can. Okay, so I'm gonna get an expression like this now. The only difference is the order of d and d star have swapped here. Again, the u star u in the middle is gonna cancel out, become an identity matrix and go away. And so I have these two matrices here. I have a star a equals this, and I have a a star equals this. And my goal is to show that A is normal. In other words, I want these two matrices to be the same as each other. But the point is, remember D, that's diagonal. And we just talked about how diagonal matrices, they commute with each other under multiplication. So D star D does equal D D star. So these whole things here equal each other, right? They have the same U on the left, same U star on the right, and then just a product of diagonal matrices in different orders in the middle. So those are the same. All right, so since D is diagonal, yeah, these two things in the middle, those products are the same. So A star A equals A A star. So yeah, A really is normal if you can decompose it in this way. So that's one half of the proof. That's the easy half of the proof. That's the only if direction. For the if direction, we've got to go the other way. We've got to show that if A is normal, then we can decompose it in this way. All right, so let's assume that A is normal. And what we're going to do is we're going to leech off of sure triangularization. So that works for every matrix, okay? So sure triangularize A as A equals U T U star, where U is unitary, T is upper triangular. And our goal is to show that actually T must be diagonal, okay? If we can show that, then we're done, right? We want to show that we can write A as U D U star. All right, so let's show that T must be diagonal. All right, so here's the trick, okay? So since we're, we're assuming that A is normal here, we know that A, A star equals A star A. I'm gonna expand this out in two different ways here, okay? I'm gonna plug in the sure triangularization, and I'm gonna compute, well, just, okay, A star A equals this chunk on the right, and A, A star equals this chunk on the left. I just plugged in those sure, sure triangularizations. And now I'm gonna expand out these starred brackets, apply the star to each term in the bracket and flip the order of multiplication. And then I'm just gonna simplify as much as possible. So I'm gonna do that on both the left and right. And when I do that, on the right here, everything simplifies down, just like earlier in the proof, down to u, t star, t, u star. And on the left, if I simplify this as much as possible, then it just simplifies down to u, t, t star, u star, okay? And if I take this equation here and I multiply it on the left by u star, and on the right by u, then this equals this, is just gonna become t, t star equals t star t. In other words, 
based on the fact that A is normal, we can conclude that T must be normal as well, okay? Because we can just expand this out to this weirdest thing equals this weird thing, and then simplify down to T, T star equals T star T. Okay, so T's gotta be normal as well. Okay, great, where does that get us? It's not, we're not quite there yet. We've still got a lot of calculation to do, but this is nice because it turns out every upper triangular matrix, if you have a matrix that's upper triangular and normal, the only way that can happen is if it's diagonal, which is what we wanna show. All right, so how do we convince ourselves of that? How do we show that a normal upper triangular matrix must be diagonal? Well, let's just write it out in terms of matrix entries. Let's do a big, ugly matrix calculation to convince ourselves of this. And in particular, I'm going to start off by computing the top left entry of this product here, right? I know these two matrices are the same, so they must have the same top left entry, the same 1-1 one, one entry. That's what this notation here means. All right, so let's compute that 1-1 one, one entry. I'm going to start on the left here. I'm going to compute the 1-1 one, one entry, the top left entry of T, T star. All right, so over here, this is what T looks like. This is what T star looks like. It's conjugate transpose. And over on the right, T star T. So here's what T star is, and here's T. So I just multiplied them in the other order. I know when I do these matrix multiplications, I better get the same entry in the one one corner, in the top left corner. All right, well, when I compute the top left entry, the one one entry of this product, remember it's row dotted with column. So it's gonna be T11 times T11 bar. Okay, so that's the length or magnitude of T11 squared, plus T12 times T12 bar. Okay, so plus, the length or magnitude of T12 squared, and so on down the line, all the way up to plus T1, T1n times T1n bar. So in other words, the 1, 1 entry of this product here is going to be this sum of squares of complex numbers, T11 squared plus T12 squared, and so on down the line. All right, so that's the 1, 1 entry of this left matrix in this product. That must equal the 1, 1 entry of this right matrix in the product. Well, let's compute that. Again, row dotted with column. Well, here you get a bunch of zeros hitting each other. The only non-zero term that you get is T11 bar times T11. In other words, the length or magnitude of T11 squared. Okay, so the 1, 1 entry of this matrix on the right is just T11 squared. And now if you look at these two things that must equal each other, we know they equal each other because we just showed that T is normal. So these two entries must equal each other. Well, the only way that's possible is if all of these entries in the sum equal zero, right? Here you've got T11 squared, T11 squared, plus a whole bunch of positive junk. Now, the only way these can be the same is if all of these positive things are actually zero, if they're not positive at all, if they're zero, right? They, these are all just real numbers that are bigger than or equal to zero. They must all equal zero for these two terms to actually equal each other. All right, so that tells us that T12 must equal zero, T13 must equal zero, all the way up to T1n must equal zero. In other words, these entries in T must all equal zero. The only non-zero thing in that first row of T is T11, the diagonal entry. So all of these guys are zero. <clears throat> all right, so T12, T13, all the way up to T1n are zero. But now, I mean, certainly that's a step in the right direction. To get us all the way to be T being diagonal, is now we just look at other entries in T, T star and T star T, right? We only use the fact that the top left entries of these two matrices are the same as each other. Now look at the 2, 2 entry of both of these matrices. And when you look at the 2, 2 entry, you're gonna find that T, 2, 2 is the only non-zero entry in the second row of T. Then when you look at T, uh, the 3, 3 entry of these products, you're gonna find that the only non-zero entry in the third row is the diagonal entry and so on. Every entry you look at zeroes out all of the non-diagonal entries in that row. So you just repeat the same sort of argument over and over and over again, and eventually you find that, yes, T is diagonal, which makes us happy. That is the other half of the proof, right? That's the if direction, which completes, completes the proof of the theorem. All right, so that'll do it for today's class. I will see you all soon for lecture 28.